Jack Carey has good reason to whistle. He's a contented fellow, a fellow who's found his niche in life. Snowshoes. Yes, snowshoes. But not just any snowshoes. These snowshoes. The snowshoes Jack makes himself, the type he spent years perfecting. They're Jack Carey's beaver tails, the snowshoe that's become his obsession. Jack Carey's become a kind of expert in snowshoe making. He's not the only fellow around who knows how to make a pair, but he's certainly the only one who's made thousands. Once he figured out how to do it, snowshoe making became a kind of hobby for Jack, a hobby that now keeps him busier than most full-time jobs. I'm Pauline Thornhill. This week on Land and Sea, we'll see just how big the demand is for Jack Carey snowshoes. At 66 years old, his are big shoes to fill. Of all the things a fellow could be known for, who'd ever think snowshoes? Now when the phone rings, 85% of the time the people say, is this a snowshoe man? So, and people up in Nova Scotia, in New Brunswick, and over in, in Peachland, over in British Columbia, people everywhere, you know, they phone up and they know, true friends, that I make snowshoes. And when they phone me, I'm the snowshoe man. Or sometimes I'll be down to the store, one of the stores, and they're walking along in the a little kid will say, look, Mommy, there's a snowshoe man, you know? So, well, that's fine. I don't mind being called a snowshoe man. It's okay. Jack didn't always make snowshoes, but he's walked a good many miles in them. Jack lives in Cornerbrook on Newfoundland's west coast. He's spent a lot of time in these woods over the years, cutting wood, rabbit catching, fishing. And in winter, there's no doing any of that without snowshoes. I'll tell you, one time my friend and I well, we went to Silver Pond before the road was through, and uh, we were on Skidoo, and we were, the Skidoo broke down, and I guess we must have been 19 or 20 miles from uh, the nearest camp, Labrador liner board camp was in, out there then, and we had to walk out to that, and uh, we left about a quarter to seven in the morning, it was hard going, and we got there about 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the night, and we had nothing to eat all day. It was tough going. When we, we, uh, we just made it, I think. If we hadn't had the snowshoes, we, we would never have made it. Yeah. Jack grew up with the conventional wooden snowshoe, the snowshoe that got him started. He was only about 17 in the woods one day, and he managed to break the only two pairs of snowshoes he owned. He couldn't afford to buy new ones, so he decided to try and make a pair. That was the beginning of it. But Jack didn't get serious about snowshoe making until many, many years later, when the Canadian National Railway closed. Jack had worked with CN for 28 years. When the railway stopped running, he was 48 years old and out of a job. What was he going to do? Make snowshoes. I remember one time when I started, I made 70 pairs, and they weren't moving. And I got right disgusted, you know, I said, I'm not going to make any more snowshoes, it's only a waste of time and on. And one day the purchasing agent from the Bowater Paper Company phoned me, and he said, you make snowshoes? I said, yes, yeah. He said, I heard you make good snowshoes. I said, yes, I do. I make the best snowshoes. So he said, do you think you could get me three dozen pairs by next week? I said, oh, yes, I think I could. So I had them down to them the next day, I had them made, you know. So I came home and there was twine going everywhere and I was making snowshoes, you know. That was 18 years ago. I'd say I'm getting up now to about, uh, not in age now, but to about, uh, it must be 6,000 pairs. Yeah. So that's 12,000 snowshoes, you know. Yeah. So I don't like to call myself an expert, but you know, if you do something that often, that's, it's pretty well the same. You've got to become good at it, you know. You'd expect to, or if you don't, there's something wrong with you. When we come back, we'll see this one-man snowshoe factory in action. 